anxiety. I've always had anxiety both in the light-hearted. I'm anxious about this kind of thing, and I've been to the depths of the darker end of the spectrum, which is not fun. When the curtain opens, I turn on this knucklehead, and he kind of takes over and goes away. Again once I walk off set. That's a great self-defense mechanism. I figure, if you're going to jump off a cliff you might as well fly. I have this meditation app on my phone. I use it at least three times a week. There will be times where I will get anxiety, but it's not a full-blown panic attack. It's just like for a couple hours. I feel as if I'm going to die. I'm a good talker, but I soon learned that you can't talk someone out of depression. Mental illness is real. And like everything else in life, it operates on a spectrum. Though there are common symptoms, everyone experiences it differently. Depression doesn't take away your talents. It just makes them harder to find. But I always find it. I learned that my sadness never destroyed what was great about me. You just have to go back to that greatness. Find that one little light that's left. With a defeat, when you lose, you get up. You make it better. You try again. That's what I do in life. When I get down, when I get sick, I don't want to just stop. I keep going and I try to do more. Everyone always says never give up but you really have to take that to heart and really do. Never definitely give up. Keep trying. When it comes to mental health conditions, we often treat them differently from other diseases like cancer, diabetes or asthma. And that makes no sense. Whether an illness affects your heart, your leg or your brain, it's still an illness and there should be no distinction because we know that mental health is just as important to our overall well-being as our physical health. Meditation has saved my sanity. Not that I was crazy, but in this world of hyperspeed, overstimulation, no escape from technology and constant emotional stress, it's very hard to stay centered and grounded. And yet, since I've integrated meditation into my daily life, which doesn't mean I do it every day, I feel so much more at ease, knowing that I can race center myself when life feels out of control. Every person can benefit from talking to somebody. I'm the most anti-medication person, but some people need medicine, and there was a time where I needed some too. So many people look at my depression as me being ungrateful, but that is not it, I can't help it. I found that as somebody who is generally pretty anxious, I didn't spend enough time celebrating the good things. I always worried about the next thing. So I would tell my younger self worrying is a wasted energy. Be passionate. Have a fire under yourself. Never stop working hard but worrying is not something you should do. If you're still not convinced, watch what you say. Because I've been in therapy since I was five. My mother started me at such a young age because I was really angry at my dad and it was coming out in the form of night terrors. Therapy literally changed my life and I've been in it pretty much ever since. Because of my years on the couch, I've gotten to know my dark side and I've learned how to keep it in check. I've never felt so bad mentally. I was so burned out. I would go home at night and couldn't speak. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I shook myself when I went to bed and woke up because it was just so much stimulation. I do have anxiety and it's an interesting part of my experience. My heart is racing and my brain is firing off and I'm just making all these jokes. And then I'm like, actually spiraling. The louder and funnier I am, you should probably ask me if I'm okay. People use panic attack very casually out here in Los Angeles, but I don't think most of them really know what it is. Every breath is labored. You are dying. You are going to die. It's terrifying. And then when the attack is over, the depression is still there. Once. My stepdad asked me 
what does it feel like? And I said, it feels like I'm desperately homesick, but I'm home. I used to suffer from social anxiety. If I didn't have plans on a Friday and Saturday nights, I would think that I'd never find a partner, that people wouldn't like me. For me, depression is not sadness. It's not having a bad day and needing a hug. It gave me a complete and utter sense of isolation and loneliness. Its debilitation was all consuming and it shut down my mental circuit board. I felt worthless, like I had nothing to offer, like I was a failure. I found that with depression, one of the most important things you could realize is that you're not alone. You're not the first to go through it. You're not going to be the last to go through it. And oftentimes it happens you just feel like you're alone. You feel like it's only you. You're in your bubble. If anybody is able to possess the financial means to go to therapy, I would recommend they do that. I think it's a beautiful thing. There's nothing wrong with working on yourself and dealing with those things with someone who can help you. Someone who can talk to you who's not your mom or whatever, who has no bias. Last year, I was suffering mentally and emotionally, and I wasn't able to stay all kept up and together. I wasn't able to keep a smile or to keep things looking normal. It felt like all of my pain and my anxiety washed over me, all at once, and it was one of the scariest moments of my life. The way that I dealt with anxiety or losing my mom, was not holding that sadness in. It's so important that you try to find gratitude in your life and focus on the positive things and when you're able to do that, or you're able to help others, you're able to get outside of yourself and you're able to look at your life from a different perspective. Sometimes it's really challenging and it's really difficult, but it's something that helps me every day. And so far it's worked.